Hey guys, this is the tutorial for the top end section where you determine um, the head type and its material and a lot of different internal options um, for the head like cam profile, VVL and VVT and stuff um, and also some uh, styling. So um, let's get started here. We have uh, first off the push rod which has changed a bit um, illustrated here by the inline 6 configuration. Uh, it has changed in one aspect and that is now it's getting a bonus on its lifespan um, and our reasoning there is that push rods and push rod engines are usually built with a timing chain which is not shown here but you will just have to imagine it and um, timing chains are basically indestructible so um, it will get a little bonus there. Uh, direct acting overhead cam is uh, still the same as before, nothing has changed there, it's still very low friction and can um, thus rev very high without problems, uh, but it has very limited breathing capabilities, so it's it's a bit bad for, for the high-end sports car stuff, of course. Um, then we do have the single overhead cam um, with the standard uh, three different valve setups, two, three and four valves and um, this one has had a little buff, it's now a bit cheaper as well as it is, uh, in especially in the two and three valve configuration, it is breathing slightly better um, than push rods and direct acting overhead cam because of the angle of the valves, it's easier to extract the gases like that. So a bit better flowing. Then we do have the dual overhead cam um, in the standard configurations as well and um, not much has changed there. Also we do have the um, aluminum um, silicon head which uh, again has the same properties as on the block material on the bottom end tab. It is um, slightly faster to manufacture um, Oh no, no, actually not this one. Um, but it is more expensive for balancing reasons and it's a bit lighter, as you can see there. Three kilos, not by much. Um, there is no magnesium variant even if you go to uh, year 2020. For the compression, not much has changed, so I don't have to tell you stuff again, I assume. So a higher compression, ah, well, it says it right here. You need um, uh, you need a higher octane rating for your fuel if you want to use that and um, especially when once we get to um, aspirated engines then it will be a significant factor for um, what turbos you can put on there. You will generally have to um, go for a lower compression then but that time is not upon us yet. Uh, cam profile has changed in its scaling. The cam profiles do look much different now and um, there is no eco rating anymore, just a low rating. So basically now the optimum eco performance um, is around um, 30 to 35 around the normal region and um, otherwise, yeah, if you go up there it's pretty bad. Um, economy is now measured as an average between 1,500 um, RPM and 2,500 RPM. For the VVT and VVL we do have new options and that is uh, either none, well you had that before. Then the old option which is for all cams but now we also do have VVL as kind of in between intermediate step for only the intake valves where it actually matters the most. Um, then we do have the VVL option and there is no in-between stuff, it still works the same way. Also note that the VVL profile automatically switches over as soon as it is uh, more efficient at producing uh, power or torque um, uh, than the lower cam profile. So if you have them very separate um, then the uh, switch over will occur in a severe dip. If you have them close, then the switch over will occur pretty early actually. Alright, then the only thing which is left to look at is um, the styling and here you have several different options for the engine. Um, 
in both the style and its color. All right, I think that is already it for um, the top end section. As the most most of the dependencies uh, will come back and haunt you in the testing tab, so uh, I'll see you there, I guess. Cheers.